So uh, today is the 13th of uh, uh, September and I'm uh, making this uh, video of the Carina just to show you the status of the vessel as she is right now. So we are in the shipyard in Lobit Tolkamer and as you can see the vessel is uh, grounded due to very low water levels in the river. And uh, at this moment uh, the, the water levels are rising again so we expect the ship to be floating in the next uh, month. Uh, the Carina has been uh, uh, built in 2014 and uh, she's been laying in front of our yard since that time. Uh, she's a 55 meter uh, fast supply intervention vessel with a hybrid propulsion system which I will explain a little bit more uh, later on. Um, we are starting now here in the back and on the outside hull you will see that we have had her in a, in a good layup condition. We have. Uh, repaired the paint when it was needed and there's no uh, sign of uh, rust on the outside and here down below due to the low water we can also see the hull vane which is a device that has uh, been developed by Van Osanen and is one of the things which allows us to save a lot of fuel on this boat. Um, also the underwater ship as you note we are here in the middle of the Netherlands or basically in the east part of Holland at the river Rhine far away from the sea and the ship has been preserved in a non-salty environment, so in fresh water. You see across our yard number of the ship is uh, 455. This is the yard number of uh, the hull in shipyard The Hope. So here you see the exhaust uh, pipe on one side. These uh, two boxes are uh, for the ship to be allowed uh, on open sea. It's a high uh, intake of the uh, engine room, which is below here. And of course, uh, the gooseneck from the exhaust pipe are coming through. And on the aft deck, you see there was wood there to protect the deck, but we've removed the wood to ensure that, uh, that we did not have any rust uh, formation underneath the wood and make sure that we uh, can maintain the deck in a good manner. Then on the forward part, you see that uh, the vessel has been moored here and sometimes a little touch up of the paint was needed but as soon as we have seen any development of uh, unprotected areas then we have painted her. We slowly move to the forward part of the bow. Um, you see down below the bulbous bow. This is another specialized device giving us about 8% reduction in uh, resistance uh, 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 on the ship and the aft uh, hull vane in the end gives about uh, up to 15 percent so these two devices the bulbous bow and the hull vane together have a long and good uh, are good help to the vessel being very fuel efficient here the foredeck as you can see is uh, pretty big um, and the pipes are not structural but purely decorative so here in this area uh, changes uh, could be made. We are on the aft deck of the Carina now and here you can see the uh, filling station with of course the leak trays and the engine room intakes and then you see it's quite a spacious deck. I believe on the on the aft side here we're talking about uh, 190 square meter. Then going inside, we enter in this area which is originally designed as luggage store and as the main entrance for the uh, offshore workers to enter the ship when um, when uh, they of course go for transport. This is an empty area but we have the storage racks for the luggage which was supposed to go in here. I'm walking in and you see that it's uh, automatic lights are switching on that's all by uh, by sensors. Here there's a fan call unit and in this area you can see that the finishing is uh, almost uh, 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 um, in a new condition. Uh, the panels paneling for the walls that's a material called light core and in fact it's actually a very heavy material but it is used uh, for the uh, uh, low uh, uh, vibrations and for this noise protection 
Also on the inside here, this is the main seating area. This is an area, uh, you see the televisions for the entertainment system, this is an area where we have a hundred seats. And that, is, of course, is the original main function of this ship, is the transport of uh, of your crew. Now this is a very big area, and it can be easily converted into an area with several cabins or offices or something like that. As of course can also be the entrance area. Here we have um, a highly uh, protected uh, uh, interior for noise and vibrations, a floating floor, a um, acoustic uh, ceiling, I'm not sure if that's visible, and the walls uh, and the entire interior is mounted uh, floating so it has no connection to the hull. When opening the door to the foredeck you see that the foredeck is very large. The design of this boat was based upon a minimum amount uh, of the aft deck of uh, 190 square meter which was a uh, uh, required by the original client and uh, with that as if given we have uh, positioned the accommodation a little bit further after more uh, supply vessels which uh, gives uh, a better uh, uh, comfort in the seating area because it's further aft on the ship actually it results into uh, less movement and less accelerations on the body when Looking in, oh, I have to open it up. And looking down below, in the forepeak, you see that it is clean, dry, well painted, no rust, and that the equipment in this area is in a very good state. We have the anchor wings here in front. And for the rest, uh, the area is painted uh, properly. Then go in here, in this secondary area behind uh, the bow, uh, or the forepeak. I will have a separate film on the inside. Coming, coming back um, through the main seating area, opening a door to the main entrance. Um, we can also show that here in this area there are the public toilets. Some of them, or all of them with automatic lighting, washing area, and the rest of the public toilets all finished and already only used one or two times during the sea trials. Um, my first uh, movement is now upwards, we go to the wheelhouse. As you may have been told, the Carina has only been used for sea trials and then was in a hot layup since 2014. Now you arrive on the bridge, the bridge has a one-man navigation setup. On various conversions we have changed this setup but this was for the original client their preferred way how to design the wheelhouse it's fully functional if you can see the windows have blinds which can be moved upwards and down even the ship bell is there and the way this works is actually quite simple you can turn this chair and look backwards and there you have the same controls as when you are moving forward with the ship. There is an all around visibility. Most of the time you will use this ship while she is on DP, dynamic positioning, using only this joystick to either turn and twist, but if you want to switch to manual then you can use uh, the left and the right the both rudders the bow thruster and as um, maybe you know 
or you don't. I don't know. This is this boat has a hybrid propulsion system, which means it uh, functions as a diesel electric ship, and on high speed it it switches over to diesel direct propulsion. And the way this works is, if you are dead still in the water and you start moving, you're always on one engine running as a generator, providing electric power to the propellers and of, and of course to the ship also. And once you want to go very fast, the ship starts to speed up. And then within, when it reaches about the speed of 13 knots, then here a light starts uh, um, flashing. So you are in diesel DE, diesel electric mode, and then it wants to go in diesel direct mode. And the captain has to release this automatic switch over. So the propellers will get 5 megawatt of direct power. The second engine has started automatically. And the ship kicks more or less into second gear as that feels. And that means that when in full speed she can go up to 21 knots. And this is the speed for which the propellers were designed right now. So this entire setup is not made for top speed, but it's made for speed keeping. We do this with two very big propellers. And uh, it is uh, set up in this way so that the speed is reliable, even after one year of fouling or with the deck fully loaded, we can keep the speed and it is not uh, coming down as much as you usually see on supply vessels. There's quite a basic navigation corner, but it has everything you need and it is also fully functional. Remember, it's all equipment which is uh, almost not being used. The suppliers and subcontractors in this ship have been continuously checking and monitoring the status of it. Formally, for majority of this equipment, the date for the guarantee has expired, but they're all willing to talk about um, um, putting the warranty back into motion. Now I'm going down here and down to the lower deck of the ship. There's one staircase. And of course there are escapeways. Coming in the lower part accommodation, you first have, when you're facing uh, the ship forward, you have on the starboard side a provision store. The provision store is fully functioning. It has three different uh, freezers for meat and vegetables and fish. And of course some dry provision store in a cooled area. And on the other side it has it's not an official galley, but it's more or less a day room because in the original setup, the ship was used or was supposed to be used uh, only during daytime. Now in the various conversions that we made, we have built in proper galleys for multi-day use on sea, uh, which can be done. Going forward, you reach the area where the crew cabins are. There's a center corridor and all the way in the end of the corridor you see this bulkhead with the escape going to the foredeck. Now in some of the conversions where we have made the forward part of, the, uh, of this area into technical space, then we've made a door in here so you can continue down below to the technical space. Um, cabins on both sides uh, in the forward part are equal. You enter, you got a small seating and a double bunk bed. Here the cabin is a little bit smaller than the aft ones because the ship is tapering in. And here you've got a wet cell, let me put on the light, which is all in a new status, even the protection is still on. Then going further aft, you first have some lockers. So storage space. And in the storage space, you see something that we have designed, which is normally only on cruise ships. It's a separate inspection hatch for the technique of the wet cell. So you, so you do not have to disturb the crew when they are sleeping and you want to repair something. This is the aft cabins. They are actually quite big and spacious also with a bunk bed a small desk and some wardrobes all with their own wet cell 
with Fanco unit, which is part of a specialized two-step system, which we have on this ship for climate control. On standard offshore vessel, climate control is most of the time one central unit, um, and that gives uh, conditioned air into the entire ship. But here we've got a two-step rocket, because in each, each area, you can fine tune the temperature, whether you're on the sunny side or on the dark side, plus or minus uh, 10 degrees. And what you also have to note is that the doors here, you see the grills on the top side aft and on the forward side low. So the grill is actually, the door is actually designed as a sound damper. The main air is coming in through the corridor. And you want the fresh air in the cabin, but you do not want the noise in the cabin from the corridor, especially because there's an engine room aft here. So these doors, all of them are designed as noise dampers, which is something you do not see often on offshore vessels, but you see it a lot in, in cruise, uh, cruise ships. Going back towards the aft ship, where the engine room is, halfway we have a small low door. And I just open it up to show you that below this entire accommodation you have a very large space. And I will go in it so you can see down below the amount of space underneath the accommodation. I'm back in the lower corridor, the center corridor we now go aft, reaching into the engine room. The first thing we pass is the switchboards. These, of course, are the brain of the ship. They are developed with Akels, one of the key electric companies that we have here in Holland for the build of uh, this uh, type of ship. The hybrid propulsion was a quite innovative uh, step. And the Carina was also therefore nominated as a ship of the year in the Netherlands in 2014. You see this electricity and electric switchboard here arrange the automatic transition from diesel electric to diesel direct and of course the management of the electricity on board of the ship. And when you then continue, you first notice the two large caterpillar engines, type of 35, 16, 16 cylinders. And in front of the port side engine, you have the generator always connected with the main shaft to the port side engine. Behind it, the fire extinguishing system. And looking around, we see here a main chiller unit not only for cooling the ship, but also for cooling, for example, the switchboards, which are water-cooled. Now, the engine have very few hours on them, as I mentioned, only a series of sea trials. And every now and then, every few months, we do a start-up if the ship is floating to ensure all still works properly. Behind the engine, you have on both sides a gearbox designed and built by Rijntjes. Also a very good brand in the Netherlands for this type of equipment. And after this, you have the electro motors, two times 450 kW, which if the ship is in a diesel electric mode, take care of the propulsion of the vessel. And then in the corner, there's a 199 kilowatt harbor generator and another Novak uh, bottle for the fire extinguishing. So if you can see, very spacious engine room. As I as mentioned, we have done several conversions of sister ships of the Carina, and four of them actually were about uh, also putting an extra generator in this space, so to have uh, more redundancy, but also the means of more, even more fuel efficient sailing on, on low speed. It's all well painted and it's good to note that all the piping in this engine room, as far as it is in direct contact with seawater, 
it's all cunifer piping so it's piping that does not oxidate that quickly it is all designed for low maintenance and in the space behind the engine room is actually a full empty space there have been many plans and different executions of this space the original client wanted to have this space to be ready to install tanks in the future for the transport of liquids to the oil and gas field but the space can be used and we are now right below the aft deck the paint condition is as new and we proceed to the most aft room and let me switch on the light if I can here yeah that's only steering gear in this area double hydraulics and the other steering gear and then this is the transom of the boat so here there's also a lot of space for example to put uh, dive bottles to make an open uh, transom uh, door and uh, things like that so that's basically the inside of uh, Carina so below the accommodation you've got a lot of space which is still can be used now this area here is just a small area in between the tanks where you have um, a boiler and, um, and, a, and a gyro installed but this space can be used even for making a washing machine uh, washing area linen store uh, and things like this which we have done in various conversions so a lot of space below the uh, lower deck accommodation. So as you can see in the bow thruster room is very big space with very limited amount of equipment in it right now. And we've used this in the different conversions of the sister vessels of Carina. Uh, we've used this space to convert it into a, a secondary technical room where you have, for example, water makers, sewage plant and things like that. Uh, alternatively, you can even put uh, uh, cabins or store in this area and in the for, uh, uh, forward side of this area, in some conversions we've made very large uh, water tanks or even fuel tanks to use the space more properly. The Carina in itself is a design which has currently a lot of uh, extra space which, uh, which is, uh, can be used for different purposes. As you see it's all well painted and there's no rust actually the paint is in a very good condition here.